Hey, what's up everybody? It's Makita from At Home with Kita. Thanks again for joining me on another video. If you're new here and this is your first time watching, hopefully you will consider subscribing. And if you have been riding with me, so you are an oldie but giddy, then thanks again for joining me on another video. So today's video is highly requested. I have had so many of you ask me about how I plan to kind of give you a walkthrough or like a planner 101 video and so that's exactly what I'm going to do today it's actually going to be a planner process video so I'm going to show you on Sundays when I do all my planning exactly how I plan I'm not going to do any planning on this video but I'm going to talk you through my thought process and exactly what I do on Sundays in terms of getting things in order for the week and since uh, actually May is coming up I'm going to talk you through a little bit about my monthly planning as well so I'm going to take you through the whole shebang from start to finish so if you want to see exactly how I plan my planning process and my thought process then stick around All right, so I have my classic size happy planner here and my mini happy planner here because those are my main two planners that I use for the week. We're not gonna talk really about memory planning or uh, any other types of planning besides my family calendar command center planning because that is a part of my, my family planning and my personal planning, but we're not gonna talk like any like specialty planning, which I consider uh, memory planning that. Uh, but we, would, we will talk about like budget planning and so forth. So we'll talk about like my whole entire process. So. Uh, I've got my classic and my mini here and so we're gonna put this to the side because it actually starts in my classic size happy planner my mini planner is my on-the-go purse planner so I take this planner with me everywhere I go so that I can make sure I stay on track if things come up I can write them in quickly or if someone asks me if we have an appointment um, I can look in this calendar because it's so readily accessible to me so I do my classic size happy planner planning first and everything is done on Sunday and so again since it is the beginning of the month coming up for May then I can show you that as well and so let's go ahead and turn and I'm gonna just show you how I would plan the week out and the month out let's turn to May right now we are currently in the last week of April and so this is my May I have done a little pre-planning and so that's where it starts for me is um, pre-planning and my pre-planning is typically done in both my planners um, if I'm not home and I need to write something in um, or stick something in because typically when I pre-plan I don't write it in permanently because I'm afraid it's gonna change so I wait till it's confirmed and then I put it in and when I do that if I'm on the go again it's going in my mini and then when I get home I transfer it over to my class size happy planner but if I'm home and that appointment comes up then I go ahead and just use a sticky note or I'll put a blank sticker um, wherever it needs to go and then once it's confirmed then I'll write it in if it is confirmed and I know it's happening for sure then I'll go ahead and write it in and so that is all a part of my pre-planning process um, and so that's the first step in the process is pre-planning and so uh, this is the beginning stages of my May um, and so when I get ready to actually plan my May out which I am going to be doing next week you'll see that video um, then I'm going to take uh, my pre-planning into consideration I'll go ahead and call people or text people and confirm appointments pull up the sticky and then I'll write it in and as you can see I've done the same thing in June there's only one thing happening in June so far and so I just put that on the little glam girl sticky note and so that again is the first part of the process you want to pre-plan and so as things come up you just want to go ahead and stick them on a sticky note pop them in your planner and that way when they get confirmed um, you know you know you can go ahead and write them in and even if they're not confirmed um, if someone asks you if you're doing something you can say well I'm supposed to be doing this and so that's that's perfect that's kind of my thought process and where I start and so if I go back to April really quickly I want to show you um, something really important to my planner because it really kind of keeps me on track because I have so much going on and sometimes I forget you know what what I need to do on a monthly basis so this is my monthly checklist so I definitely recommend that everyone have a monthly checklist. So this is just like reminders of things that I want to do every month. Um, so I want to do my cash envelopes every month. I want to come up with Malachi's uh, Bible study ideas every month. My budget planning, my daily schedule, my cleaning schedule, family worship ideas. Um, I want to do letter writing every month. I want to come up with my ministry schedule. My uh, I want to check events going on. Um, Addison's reading, I want to keep up with that monthly. Um, I want to add shop items. I want to come up with a coupon schedule, which I haven't quite implemented yet. Um, 
Malachi is going to be starting back probably homeschooling next year. So I need to do my homeschool planning eventually. I want to keep up with people's anniversaries, the fitness planning schedule at my gym. I want to have IG photo ideas already ready, family outings. I want to do movie night, memory planning, monthly planning. Of course, that's what we're doing today. Um, I want to do a photo a day eventually. I haven't quite implemented that yet. Um, we have a family meeting every month. Uh, so I need to make sure I write that in. Um, Malachi's homework, which school is about to end soon. So I'm not going to have to think about that too much longer. Um, and then also want to do some stuff for my meetings and then my family command center planning. So this is all stuff that I want to make sure I'm doing on a monthly basis. So if you had this type of monthly checklist, it'll really help you when you get ready to plan your month out. And so what I would do is I would just go ahead and figure out what days I want to do these things on. And then I will go ahead and write them in on my calendar. And since these are going to happen, then I go ahead and write them in. I don't need to use a, a sticky note or a blank sticker. And so my calendar for the month consists of all these monthly reminders as well as recurring things. Um, so if we go back to April, since this is almost done, this is pretty much how my, my May is going to look with the exception of whatever uh, weekend appointments or uh, week appointments that I have going on. And so um, there are certain things throughout my week which are always going to happen. Like we're always going to do our family worship on Thursday. Um, Addison's probably all, always going to have a uh, camp or some sort of class at the library on Wednesdays. Uh, on Tuesdays, we're always going to be at our religious meeting. Monday's always going to be Malachi's Bible study. Sunday's also going to be our religious meeting day as well. And so those are things that's always going to happen. Friday is always going to be my ministry day and Saturday as well. And so that those are things that go on my calendar first because they're always going to happen. And then I schedule my life around those things. And so uh, so that's the, the first step in the process as well. Um, in addition to my monthly reminders, which some of the stuff that I just mentioned to you are kind of on here as well, like my uh, ministry schedule and, and family worship and stuff like that. Well, this is actually for ideas because I like to come up with ideas ahead of time and and so um, some of this stuff coincides with the monthly schedule, but for the most part, these are just really like m reminders of things that I want to make sure I do. And then these are appointments and things we're going to that are all that are recurring. So they're going to happen every week, always for forever until something changes. And so um, so I write that stuff in first and then I schedule everything around it. Um, I also know Addison's ballet is always going to happen. Um, it may not always be on Tuesday, though, um, but I do go ahead and write that in as well. Well, and so other than that, anything else, like I said, get scheduled around it. And then on my notes on the side, let me just turn back to the month. I did go ahead and add this little glam girl um, uh, sticky note. And so this is the long sticky note, which I absolutely love. So I added this here because this month is going to be Glam Girl because I miss my Glam Girl a little bit. Um, I love the neutral. So I'm not going back to Glam Girl, but I do want to plan with stickers. So my first monthly spread is going to be Glam Girl or not my first, but May's monthly spread. And then uh, the first week in May is going to be Glam Girl. So stay tuned for that. And then I added this little box down here from my shop. So which is super cute. It's got a little bow here. Um, you guys saw this on my Instagram stories. So I put that there. And so again, you you see here just little sticky notes of things that I want to make sure that I get done um, I do know a couple of things that may be confirmed but um, my also part of my thought process is um, checking with my husband so uh, my friend said that she has a graduation party on this day I know it's happening for her because she's planning it um, but I haven't talked to AJ yet to make sure that it's okay with him and so that's why I still use the sticky notes so sticky notes will be things that aren't confirmed that are just kind of thrown out there and then also things that I haven't confirmed with him to check the schedule from him because he doesn't operate like I do um, just to make sure that it's uh, available I'm trying to get him using the monthly family command center it's kind of not working out like I want it to yet but he's getting used to it he did go ahead and write a couple of things um, that are occurring a couple of weeks out so I was super proud when I flipped to it and I saw that and then he did write a couple of things from last week so I'm hoping that he gets used to it because it's really important to have that in place because um, that way we don't have a conflict so I just wanted to talk you through my monthly and so on Sunday um, this coming Sunday what I'll do is I'll I'll sit down and I'll plan my monthly out and so on Sundays when I plan I'm planning my monthly planning if needed I'm planning my mini happy planner monthly if needed which will need to be happening on this Sunday as well and then I plan my weekly planning and my classic happy planner and my weekly planning in my mini um, if I don't need to plan my week of course it'll just be weekly and classic weekly and mini and then the next thing that I plan for um, 
is, well, other things that I plan for is I do all of my business planning. If there's any business planning that I need to do, as you can see, there's a tab here, but any business things will go in my happy planner. Um, this is just mostly ideas and stuff. And so, but I look here to see like what I have going on that I want to make sure I remember. I am trying to incorporate wellness. I'm not going to talk too much about that on this video, um, but I do uh, want to incorporate this again soon. And since I'm not incorporating it now, then that's not a part of my process right now. And then I also do my meal plan planning and my recipe planning, which we are going to talk about because that is part of my process. And then I also am uh, doing my budget planning as well. So all that's in here. And so I'm going to talk you through it in order of which I do it just so you don't get confused. So again, monthly and classic monthly and mini. That's my first step. So now that we've covered that, the next thing that I would do on a Sunday is I would go ahead and plan out my week. Now my week starts with this little half sheet right here. I absolutely love and obsessed I'm obsessed. I can't say that enough with these half sheets. So in April, I was using the um, Get Focused half sheets, which I did a video on my channel, which you guys have seen by now. And so this is the last week, the current week that we're in right now, the last week of April. Um, and so I used the Get Focused, but since we're doing Glam Girl, these are the Glam Girl half sheets. So I'm gonna be using that uh, the first week in uh, May. So I'm super excited to do a whole Glam Girl spread. And so this is where it starts for me when it comes to the weekly. This is very important to my whole week. This determines pretty much what I'm doing. And so, uh, so what I'll do is I'll decide what dinners we're having for the week. And then um, once I decide what dinners we are having for the week, I'll go ahead and look at my orders from all of my shops and I'll see which orders I need to do. And then I'll go ahead and plan out my video ideas. And where I pull my video ideas from is my business section. And so I have a list here of YouTube video ideas. I'll pull them from here and then I'll cross them off. Now, if there's nothing here that I want to do, or which I do have a front and a back side too, um, if there's nothing here that I want to do, then um, I'll just come up with new ideas or I will actually go back to my previous weeks and see what I wasn't able to film like I know this week I'm supposed to film um, this video today my planner routine and then I'm supposed to film an organization video but if I don't get to that then I will push that to this week and so as you can see let me see there's nothing here that I pushed so I gotta get this video done hopefully I can get it done and then uh, so I'll look here for at the previous week and if I don't see anything then I'll just keep going back and I'll say what did I get to film and I'll look at this and then I'll just pull that over so either I'm gonna pull it over or I'm just gonna come up with something new or I'm gonna look at my business section to see what ideas I have there all right and then the next thing I do is I go ahead and write out my running to-do list and my running to-do list consists mainly of things that have been pushed from the previous week just like my video ideas sometimes I don't have uh, or get as much done as I want to do and so uh, as you can see there's a to-do section here and then if we go back here there's also a to-do section here and so I check things off as I get them done and then whatever doesn't get done goes to the next week and so forth and so on so all of this stuff is just pushed from weeks and then also new things things that I need to do and so that's what goes in this section here and then at the bottom here are my social media stats so this is my YouTube subscribers and my Instagram subscribers and so uh, again this is the first step in the process for my weekly planning so I plan this out first so I'm looking on Pinterest to see what recipes I want to do I'm looking on my shops to see what orders need to be completed um, I'm thinking about video ideas that I want to do and writing them in and then I'm just pulling uh, different to do items from the previous weeks or thinking of new new to do items that I need to do for the week. So that's what I keep on here. And then I go ahead and log into my social medias. I see uh, on, well, actually on Monday, I do this. I see how many uh, followers I have on Instagram and I see how many subscribers I have on YouTube, just so I can kind of keep track of how many I'm getting weekly. Um, not that it, it's all about numbers, but I just like to see like my growth. And so, uh, so that's it. So I love these half sheets. So this is where it starts on my weekly planning. And then on the back here is my grocery list. All right. So if we want to drill down a little bit deeper, because of course this is an in-depth video, I want to be as thorough as possible to kind of give you a little insight in terms of what I do on a weekly basis and also uh, monthly as well. And so we're going to drill down to some of this stuff. Uh, first, we're going to start with the weekly meal plan. Meal planning is very important to our family. Um, I do all of the meal planning and cooking for my household on occasions when I can't, for whatever reason, which hardly ever happens, my husband does it. Um, but like I said, I, I do all the shopping and all that stuff. I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. And so, but that's the typical mom, right? Um, so what I do on Sunday is I actually go into Pinterest. I uh, have 
a lot of videos on my channel on menu planning and my whole process. So of course, I'll link those for you just in case you wanna watch them. But on this video, since I'm kind of cramming everything all into one, um, I kind of want you to watch this video and get a sense of everything. Um, so weekly meal planning, I go, uh, I do that multiple ways. I either go into Pinterest and I look on my board. I have a board on Pinterest called Yum O, and that has a lot of different recipes on there. Um, I also have other boards depending on what I got going on, like if I'm dieting or what have you, I have boards for those as well. And so if we come on my board and um, just to kind of give you a glimpse, I'm going to show you like what I would do. So I would go into this board here called Yummo. I would just scroll through. There's some couple of things here that I'm making next week, like I'm making chicken and waffles and I'm making some other things that I already have planned out. Well, not planned out, but I got laid out in here. And so this is, again, a, the beginning part of the process for my weekly menu planning. Um, and so when I come in here, I'm just looking to see what I've cooked in the past because this is probably, if it's in my board and pen, most likely I've tried it before. And so I'll look and see See what we've had in the past that I may want to cook again or I'll go into the actual Pinterest um, and I'll start pinning stuff that I want to try and so like these chicken and waffles and other things that I just recently pinned we haven't tried yet and so I'm always trying to try new recipes my family loves keeping it fresh and so uh, that's the beginning part I'll come in here look and see what I want to cook if I don't see anything that I want to cook here you guys know I've got my trusty recipe planner here which i absolutely love this thing guys this is I just this is my favorite part of planning then i'll come in here and again these are all in my pinterest board too but if for some reason i just don't feel like going on pinterest or i overlook it on pinterest um, i'm going to come in here and i'm going to say what did we have that i really liked um, that the family really liked that we can cook and then um, also a part of the process of looking in here is not only to see that what we want to cook but it's also to pull the pages out because what i do is i pull the pages out of here once I find out what we want to cook and then I actually put them into my recipe section of my planner so I'm gonna flip here really quick this is my recipe section you guys have seen this a ton of times and then I go ahead and I'm sorry I'm skipping I'll pop them in right here and typically it's gonna be three pages because I cook three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so I'll pull the three recipes out that I wanna use and then I'll pop them in here. And that way everything is in my planner. I don't have to go into other planners. I don't have to keep my budget planner, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have to keep my recipe planner with me at all times. My recipes are right here. So when I get ready to go to cook in the kitchen, just pull this classic planner with me, flip to the page, pull it out if I want, and just sit it on the counter or, or prop it up. And then I've got my recipe there. A lot of these recipes I really do know already, um, but you know, I, I just like to have them in here. And then also when I'm doing my, uh, after I pull these recipes out and I snap them in here, the next part of the process for my weekly is going to be my grocery list. And so by having this in my planner, then um, it kind of makes me a little bit more relaxed because I can plan in the bed. I can plan on the couch. I don't have to be in such a formal setting at a desk or anything like that to uh, be productive. And so having these in my planner is essential because um, now when I get ready to do my planning for the uh, grocery shopping that I got to do, let me turn to that, then I could just go ahead and pull these, put them right here, and then I can see what items I need and I can write them on my grocery list. And so I can do that all informally. I don't have to be sitting at a desk. Um, and that just helps me, you know, just a little sidebar. And so um, um, then I'll pull that, I'll write all the ingredients, then I'll pull the next page and so forth. And so I love having this in my planner. And so again, we're just drilling down to the weekly meal plan and I'm just kind of elaborating on that whole process. And so now if they're new recipes that I haven't yet tried, or if it's a mixture, then you'll see a mixture of pages pulled out of this planner. And then you'll also see blank pages. And so what I do in this particular case, I will need blank pages. And again, I'm trying to show you like as if I'm actually planning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out actually let's see what am I making I'm making southern chicken and waffles I'm making a freezer meal meatloaf um, and then I'm adding po uh, potatoes mashed potatoes and asparagus and then I'm making chicken parmesan garlic knots so I love um, just to kind of give you a little more about my thought process you know I'm, you know I'm thorough I try to be as thorough as possible because I get a lot of questions and then I get a lot of comments about how much you guys appreciate my thoroughness um, and so anyways that's why I talk a lot and I try to kind of cram everything all into one video just so there's less questions and so since I'm doing chicken and waffles and garlic parmesan not sandwich they can both go on one page there's no difference in the two really now I know some of you may pl recipe plan differently you may like to section yours out a little bit more but I will probably file this under 
the chicken and waffles and the garlic parmesan knots under family favorites because I know they're going to be family favorites. I already know. And so I would file those in in family favorites in my recipe planner. And so they wouldn't be like a main dish entertaining any of that stuff. And so that's why I could file them or them on one page. Now, if they were two separate, like if one was a weight loss meal and one was a family favorite or one was entertaining and one was healthy fare, um, then I would put them on two separate pages. And so I can write the Southern chicken and waffles and the garlic Parmesan on one page, one in front, one in back. So we only need one page there. And then the meatloaf and potatoes and asparagus is a freezer meal. Um, I probably already wrote that out in here, but let's just check. I may not have, um, I don't think I did. And so let's go ahead and actually I did a freezer meal video, so it's gotta be in here. So let's see, because I was going to say another option, which I think about is, is there a page in my recipe planner that's blank on the back? If there is, I don't want to. And so I'll pull that blank page and then I'll just write it on the back. But I know I have the meatloaf in here because again, I did a freezer meal video and I wrote out all of my recipes so you guys could see that process. And so what I would do is I would just find it in here and then I would just go ahead and pull it out. I found it and then I'm going to pop that in the recipe section of my classic size happy planner. So as you can see, let me move that. I've got a page for everything. And so I've got this, which is going to be for these two recipes here. And then I've got my Italian meatloaf, which is a freezer meal, which I've already planned for. All I've got to do is pop that baby in the oven. By the way, my freezer meals are going awesome. We've already had a pasta. We've had one of the meatloafs because I made two. And then we've had the um, taco casserole. And they all were wonderful. There was nothing wrong with them. The noodles were fine. Everything was fine about them. So the next one that I cook, I'm going to post a picture and put it on my Instagram just so you guys can see but it was just as delicious as if I cooked it and ate it the, the day of. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to, to come back because a lot of people have been asking me that. So now that I've got these, I would take these again and I would file them back here in my recipe section and then they would be ready for planning. And so I would actually do that after I did my weekly planning. And so just kind of let you know, like in the, the time frame of things. And so we're just still drilling down to our uh, recipe planning and our menu planning. And so again, when I start my week out and I get ready to my, do my weekly planning, I'm planning on this half sheet first, and then I'm planning my week next. I'm just showing you or drilling down and talking you through the process of this page and how I use it. And so once I get done planning my weekly planning, then that's when I'm gonna look here and do all of my menu planning stuff. And so that's when I'm gonna pull those sheets out, put them in here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and decorate those sheets. So that's part of the process too and then once I'm done decorating and planning on those pages then I'll go ahead and do my grocery list which is on the back here and so this is everything that uh, I need for the week to cook these two recipes because again this is a freezer meal I do the potatoes and asparagus and so those are the only two items that will be on this grocery list um, the other three days are leftovers and then Sunday we eat out we try not to eat out but it's like everybody fend for themselves. So do what you got to do. <laughs> and so um, just to drill down on that. So again, weekly planning first and then menu planning. And so um, so that's really how I use this half sheet. Uh, orders are just pulled from online. Video ideas, again, just come from my head or other uh, weeks that I haven't planned for. And then this is transferring from week to week. So I just wanted to go through the first part of or the second part of my process, depending on if it's uh, monthly that I have to plan for. If I don't have to plan for monthly, I'm coming straight here and I'm doing this first and then I'm planning for my week. All right, so you got that? I know that was a lot of information, but again, I just wanna be thorough. So I'm gonna pull this out because now I wanna talk about my weekly process. So when it comes to my weekly process, my first thing that I do is I just flip to my monthly <laughs> because my monthly is gonna tell me everything that I have to do for the week. And then this comes into play. And so what I'll do is I'll say, what is recurring? Just like I did on my, my weekly spread. What do I know that's happening this week that happens every week, no matter what? So I know every week I'm going to be doing my Bible study with Malachi. Every week, Addison has ballet on Tuesdays and we do our religious meeting in the evenings. Every Wednesday, she has letter camp or something at the library. Um, every Thursday, we do our family worship. Every Friday is our ministry day, Addison and I, every Saturday as well. And then once I get that on my calendar or in my head, because 
Again, when you see my plan with me, you don't see that stuff put on here first. There's a process to it. But I get it in my head. Um, and then once I get ready to actually plan with all my stickers and my decor and everything, I've already got a mental note of that stuff. And since it happens recurring every week, I already have it in my head pretty much. Um, but that's the first part of my thought process is what do I have going on for the week? And then I go ahead and see like what other things outside of that are happening. What do I have going on on the weekend? What family things are we doing? What, you know, what things do I have scheduled? And then I also think about what I can do, like what events are going on in the area. And again, uh, just to go back to my monthly, that is actually a part of my monthly planning as well. And I think I did say that because it should be on my list. Yeah, family outings. Um, and so I look on uh, a couple of different websites, which I'll link below if you're the, in the Atlanta area, which are pretty good. And I think one of them is nationwide. And and um, I look on that app and then I also look on Facebook events to see what is going on in my area that our family can go to. And I'll put it on the calendar and I'll go ahead and write it in. I don't put a sticky note unless I'm pre-planning. And again, we're not really talking too much about pre-planning on this video because that is done throughout the week and as time goes along. And so um, once I get here, this stuff is happening. And um, or I'm calling family, friends or whomever to make sure that I get it confirmed. And so uh, once I find those events I want to go to in the area, I go ahead and write them in because I really want to force myself to try to make them happen. And so um, so that's all a part of my thought process, too. And then when I'm doing my actual planning, you guys, again, have seen several plan with me. I'm going um, to start on my sidebar here and on my sidebar, just to kind of give you a glimpse of, of last week or the current week. Let's do that because that's what we're in right now. This is the current week. So maybe I should, should walk you through this because this is something visual that you can see as opposed to a blank page. So I'm coming here first. So my important things are things I want to make sure that I don't forget to do or to just important things. That's self-explanatory. And then I put a little to buy section here. Um, and that's just like a little grocery list of things I don't want to forget as things come up. Um, I know I need things for my business and personal and my family. I don't want to forget about it. So I'll write it here. And then what I do with this list is I actually transfer it into my mini happy planner. And uh, what I do is um, I open up, I have some Let's see, I have a menu section here, which should probably be a grocery section. And then I keep a list normally. These are my little grocery uh, DIY, not inserts, because these are Happy Planner inserts for the weekly um, hourly schedule. I use these as my menu planning. And again, you guys know I got a video on my channel, <laughs> so you can always go back to watch that. I keep blank paper in here, and my blank paper is uh, pulled from here. And so that way when I'm on the go, I'm not taking this big classic happy planner with me. Um, sometimes I'll take a photo on my phone with it and that way I remember it that way. But if I don't remember to do that, that's why it's a good to have it in here as a backup. But just to show you, sometimes I'll just take a quick snapshot on my phone. And so that way, maybe I deleted it. Did I delete it? I try to keep up with deleting my, my pictures on my phone so it doesn't get bogged down. I probably deleted it, but anyways, that's why for me it's important to write it here and then write it here and so that way again since this is my purse planner i'll have this with me at all times i can just i'll have it and if i end up stopping at the grocery store or uh if i'm running my errands then i can go ahead and already have the list there with what i need to pick up and so that's what i write here and then at the bottom here is just quotes and decorative stuff so when it comes to my weekly planning um my day-by-day -day planning it always starts with my checklist here this is my must-do list that i have to get done daily um, and so what I try to do is I pull my to-do list from guess where from here <laughs> so I pull my to-do list from here and um, I plan out day by day so when you see me doing a plan with me that's why I always do decorates with me I never um, write in a plan with me because I feel like some stuff I don't know if it's gonna happen um, you know I don't know if I'm gonna do it and I just like doing it day by day so when I get up in the morning and I come down it's already decorated and then I go ahead and write in what do I want to do today so I sit down at my desk and I brainstorm and I say okay what from here can I realistically do and then also what do I want to do outside of that so this list consists of to do items from here it also consists of orders that I want to do it consists of filming that I need to do and just random 
random other things that I need to do throughout the day. And so again, all this is going to be blank except um, like appointments and things that I know are happening like Bible study, you know, um, reading time. Some, some of the things here are going to be standard stuff, family worship, um, my ministry, my meeting day, all that stuff is going to be on here and it's already set in stone. But these checklists are for my, my things that I need to do daily outside of appointments, if that makes sense. And so again, I'll come here daily and I'll see just a blank checklist. And then I'll come here and I'll say, what am I doing today? And then I'll write it in. Now I did make these schedule checklists, which have been going pretty well, guys. I actually love having a schedule. I'm really not a big fan of being tied to hour by hour. So we just try to do it within reason. I really wanna tighten that up a little bit, but I love these. They actually worked out really well for the week. And so um, I'm so glad I implemented these. And so I'll probably add one or two to my calendar for um, next week's spread. I'm not sure yet because I wanna use Glam Girl Full Out. Uh, but I did love having these. and so. So, um, so these are pivotal as well. So just to kind of let you know that. And so again, starts with my checklist here, write out what we need to do, what I'm filming, what I'm doing, what orders I need to do day by day. And so that's how I plan that out. Everything else on here is just decorative stuff and it's stuff that I pulled from my monthly calendar in terms of weekend appointments. If I've got a party to go to, if we're going on vacation, anything like that is going to be set in stone on here as well. And then also my recurring things, like I mentioned earlier, are going to be set in stone here as well. So that's the next part of the process after I do my half sheet here is I go ahead and plan out my week. I decorate it. And again, I don't write anything in until the day of. And so I hope I'm not forgetting anything because that is, that is my process in terms of my weekly planning. So once I get done with my weekly planning and I write everything in, so I've done my monthly planning already, I've done my weekly planning already, and then I do my menu planning. And again, we've just pretty much discussed everything for menu planning, so I don't have to go too much in depth with that. Um, and then again, I write my grocery list, but that's all a part of my menu planning. So once I got done with that section, I would go to my meal planning section, which again, we just talked about, and it says meal planner here. I did get these inserts from the Happy Planner family, or uh, the Happy Planner, what is it? The extension pack, you guys know what I'm talking about, home management. Um, and so um, not to walk you through this stuff again, because I have videos on my channel on my walkthrough and how I set it all up. So again, I would come here and then I would say, what am I cooking? And again, I've got that here. And so I would look here and I would say, okay, we're making, oop, right here. So I would say we're making this, this, and this, and then I would come in, I would write it in on each page. And again, we've already got that done, so that's awesome. And then I would sit down with my stickers. Here is my recipe planner inside of here. I've got all of my stickers. These are just random happy planner stickers. I'll pull that out and then I'll go upstairs to my room or because um, I hardly ever plan in my craft room um, but I'll just come down I'll have these here and then I'll write it in I'll take my stickers I'll decorate it out I got my phone here with Pinterest and it's really soothing and therapeutic so I love recipe planning again that's my favorite 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 part of planning and so um, so that's how I spend my Sundays in terms of menu planning um, and so I've already done my monthly planning I've already done my half sheet planning snapshot of the week I've already done my weekly planning I've already done my monthly planning I know it seems like a lot guys, but this is, this is what I have to do to keep myself in order. You know, if I don't do it, then you'd be amazed. Things kind of just fall apart. It's crazy how that works out. And so if I miss a week of planning, things go crazy and things just fall through the cracks. And so I'm not about that life. I'd rather be organized, be on track. And then I look good because my friends are like, you are so organized. <laughs> And I'm like, really? I'm a hot mess. But it looks like I'm organized because, again, I keep up with my planners. And so, you know, there may be a, a week here, a week there that I'm not planning in one section. But for the most part, I, I'm planning somewhere. And so I might miss a month in my weekly or, or a week in my weekly. I might miss a week in my budget planner. I might miss a month in my budget planner. So, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to plan in every single planner. If you have your classic planner with your monthly view and you're just putting everything all on that and your weeklies, you're drilling down, or even if you're just doing monthly, that's just fine. But I just feel like planning is very important to my household and my family to keep us on track. And I know it's a benefit if everyone did it as well. So again, we've done all of that planning. And so now we want to see 
what other planning we need to do. And so that is probably going to be my, again, it would be my wellness planning, which I do want to get back to, but I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to do it full out. I don't want to do a week and then a, a month and then a week and then not use it right because they are undated. And so I want to really treat them like they're you know, important. And I want to treat them like, you know, cause stuff costs money. I don't want to waste it. And so I'm not ready to quite get on that bandwagon yet because my fitness journey has fallen completely off the bandwagon and I'm just not, I don't know. I got to get back on track. And so this would probably be the next step in the process if I were to be fitness and wellness planning. So since I'm not, then the next step in the process would be my budget planning. Now my budget planning again has fallen completely off the bandwagon as well, but I'm, I'm starting back for a so as you can see, April has nothing, nothing, but I'm going to go ahead and pull a month just to kind of walk you through my doc, my planning process. So you can see like how I'm planning on planning once I do uh, start back for May. All right. So this is my budget planner. And so what I do with my budget planner, which I'm going to go ahead and do now as well is I'm going to pull these pages for April out because April is obviously not getting planned for. And so let's go ahead and pull those pages out. And then we're going to go ahead and put in May. And again, I am going to do May because I really love budget planning. And I'm going to show you my old way of budget planning. And I'm going to talk to you about like how I'm going to do it now. And so when I'm done with the month and it's already planned for or not planned for, <laughs> then I go ahead and take it and I put it in the back of the planner. So as you can see, there's March, not planned for, by the way. But again, I'm back. Hopefully I'm back because it's just a lot of planning. And sometimes I just feel like, you know, once I get to budget planning, I'm like, OK, this this is enough. I've had enough because I've already done menu planning. I've done weekly plan. I've done half sheet planning. I've done possibly monthly planning. I've done my mini happy planner weekly. I've done my mini happy planner monthly if it needed to be done. So it's a lot of planning going on around here. OK, but I do get other things do, done, too. I promise I'm not just all about that planner life and not like focusing on my family. If I need to throw this planner out the window and just focus on family because I'm doing too much of my planner, I will. So don't get it twisted. You know what I mean? I do, um, you know, I keep things in perspective. Let's put it like that. And so hopefully if you do it right, your whole year is planned for and you can reflect back on it. But again, my, my whole year is not because I'm a budget slacker, a budget planner slacker. And so let's go ahead and put May in here because I'm really excited about starting back to plan again. So I'm going to show you a previous month, like my best month, <laughs> because I do like budget planning and I think it's really important. There's an awesome channel. Her name is Shea Budgets. I absolutely love and adore her. She's a really good friend of mine. She has great budget videos. Her name is Shea Budgets. Again, if I didn't mention that already. So I would definitely check her out because she is much better at this thing than I am. I'm a budget planner, babe, and she is not. So I would definitely check her out. So let me look at one of the months here that I did really well in. I think December was my best month. Or was it February? Might have been February. Yeah, February was really cute and decorative. I loved February. So I'm going to talk you through like how I used to budget. So this used to be my family budget planner. So this was everything that we had going on as a family in terms of our expenses. And um, and so I would write everything in and then my weekly I would actually print on the pages. I do have a template on my website uh, that you can download where you can print on the pages. I wanted to show you another month that I printed on better our week that I printed on better than this one and I actually decorated the week. Let's see. Was it in January? So that way you can see like actually how it looks. I don't have that blank paper in here. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so my monthly in January wasn't good as you can see, but my monthly in February was. And so I guess I, I got a sudden burst of energy at this point and then it stopped at this point. <laughs> So, um, so this is my template for printing on the pages. Again, I, I hate, I hate to always keep referring to a half a video on my channel, but I do <laughs> in terms of how you print on these pages. And then I also have a sticky note template video on my channel as well. And so, uh, what I would do is I would go ahead and plan my month out as you can see like this, and then my weekly would be drilling it down and I would go ahead and plan for the week, um, in terms of my sticky notes and bills and stuff that I had to pay. And then, like I told you in my weekly planner, I go day by day in terms of writing and my expenses and all that other stuff. And so this was really, really functional for us. Um, but we did since implement a spreadsheet, which is awesome. If I can find out 
if I can link it to you guys, I would. It's very in-depth and might be a little bit overwhelming and confusing at first, but it's thebomb.com. And so that's what we use right now. And it's really helped us to really tighten up our finances and to kind of see things at, at a glimpse and in depth. And then also to be able to both go to that because my husband's not coming in this budget planner. You know, he, you know, we would discuss it, but he's not going to come in here and write things in. And so with the spreadsheet, I can log in and I can, uh, put what I need to put and then he can put what he needs to put and then we can have our budget meeting and then we can, you know, everything is all good. It all works out. So this is how I used to use it. Again, this is my weekly. And so I would come here and I would put all my sticky notes and I would put all my stickers and all that stuff and make it cute and functional. And then, um, I do, uh, write in like my spending day by day and my, uh, my shop stuff day by day, stuff I was bringing in, money I was bringing in, stuff was going out, savings and all that stuff would be written in day by day. So that's how we used to do the budget planner system. But now I am not going to be doing it full out that way. How I'm gonna be doing it now is this uh, budget planner is only gonna be for my stuff. And so my husband has his income coming in and I have my income coming in from my shops. Now how we do it, how we split it out is um, I have a digital party shop on Etsy, which is Digi Prince Boutique. I have two Shopify shops. One is the Party Girl Studio, which is all my party supplies, as well as like my wooden signs and my home decor and all that stuff. And then I have my Little Miss Fancy Plans, which is my sticker shop. So um, how the money comes in is it comes in through credit card payments and it also comes in through PayPal. So when a customer comes and they pay through PayPal, it goes to my PayPal debit card, which I have a physical card, and that is my spending money. Any money that comes in through credit card payments or Amazon Pay or anything like that goes into our joint bank account and that's what my husband and I use for our finances. I don't touch that money even though it it's not my money because we're, we're married so it's not one person's money over another but I'm just using that as a point of reference so uh, any of that money that comes in um, and it goes to our uh, joint bank account we use that for bills and so again I don't I don't use that for any spending or anything like that if it's not coming in through uh, my PayPal then I don't have it I can't buy it you know and so that kind of keeps me in check and keeps things in order and everything and so um, so I love that way and then I also do uh, Amazon affiliate as you guys know um, you know when you buy something um, from my links that I put in my description box um, I do get a small very small commission from that and so um, that goes to my Amazon account it just sits there until I'm ready to use it and a lot of times I'm buying um, a equipment to make my videos better, software, different things like that. I'm buying so that I can make my videos good and that you guys will want to come back to my channel and that you will enjoy the content that I'm making. So I'm constantly putting it back in the business. I'm also buying um, supplies that I need for my other shops and businesses, sticker paper, stuff like that. So um, so that's my spending money. And so if again, if it's not coming through those means, my PayPal, my um, my Amazon affiliate or uh, anything like that. If it's not coming in through those ways, then I can't buy what I need to buy personally. Now, if it's something that I really need, of course, I'm gonna use my, my debit card or my family uh, joint bank account. So it's not like I can't use it, but I really try to limit myself so that way we can save more. So. I said all that to say that this is actually gonna be for my personal uh, budgeting. So any money that comes in through PayPal or Amazon or anything like that, I'm gonna track here. I also do have bills that I personally pay, like anything affiliated with my YouTube channel. Like I use a music service to, uh, to have all that fabulous music that you guys like uh, piping through my videos, that costs money. And then I also have other things that I pay for on my own. And so I wanna track all that in my budget planner. And so that's what this is gonna be used for. So. When I'm doing my uh, weekly planning, um, again, since it is going to be the beginning of May, I'm going to have to do my mini monthly planning, my classic monthly planning, and then I'm going to have to do this monthly planning. So that's going to be a part of this crazy Sunday that's about to happen. And so, of course, y'all know I'll do a video on my budget planner because I don't have that many videos on my channel, and you guys seem to enjoy that. So within this budget planner, I've got all these budget printable or all these budget uh, sheets from Happy Planner, and then I've got two sets of stickers here. So I use these a lot. And then I'll probably use some uh, out of the budget planner sticker book from Happy Planner as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in everything here that I know I need to pay throughout the week. And then I'm also going to print on the pages like I showed you here. But I'm going to make a new template, I think. I love this template. And I'm going to keep that, of course, on my shop because uh, you guys seem to love it as well. But I do want to uh, tweak a couple of things for myself personally. But I think you guys may benefit from it as well. So, of course, I will let you know 
know when that's up and running because you may want to download it um, so I am going to be printing on the pages just to show you how it looks because maybe with the stickers it's a little busy um, but this is how it looks so it's got a spot here for today's budget, um, a starting balance, goals, a no spend if you're on a no spend, um, your uh, spending that you're doing daily, the total amount spent, any bills you have, and any savings you got. And so this is really, really handy. I love this, so I'm gonna implement it again because I think that sometimes this can be overwhelming with the page being blank like this. Sometimes it's like, okay, what do I write? And so I think with having the template, it just helps out. And so I'm gonna definitely do that. So I've gotta print that out on Sunday as well. So. I'm trying to make sure that I don't forget anything. So that's all a part of my process. After I've done my menu planning, I'm coming here, I'm doing my budget planning, I'm planning for my month, and then I'm planning for my week. And so that that's all the planning that I do. Not to say it like that because that is a lot of planning. And then what I'm gonna decide to do, I think when it comes to um, budget planning, because um, actually when I do my grocery shopping and stuff like that, that does come from our joint bank account. It doesn't come from my personal money. That personal money is only like things I need to buy personally for myself. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So I don't have to get that from our bank account. I can use that from the money that I've earned. And so what I'm going to start uh, doing, which um, I think I'm going I'm to switch it up a little bit. Right now, I use my cash envelopes as a cashless cash envelope system. So um, what that means is I don't put any money in here. Um, these are my cash envelopes. You guys have seen this ton of times. There's so many of you guys who downloaded these. I, I'm so appreciative of that. And there's so many people tag me on IG and have done videos about these, um, these printables. So I'm glad you guys love them as much as I love them. And so what I do now is I don't put money in here again I do a cashless system and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll I know this is for entertainment so as I'm spending things um, I'll give myself a budget of course I'll say for the month of budget category which is on the front of here and then the total budget and then I'll write in what I'm spending according to what I wrote in on the budget so if you don't want to carry cash around and you, you just don't feel safe with it um, doing it that way stuff in these envelopes you don't have to you can use it as a cashless system and it's still the same thing it's just that you won't have the physical cash here but you do have to be more on yourself and you have to be more diligent about like being aware I mean you still can't like just go all out and just spend what you want to spend if you want a budget then you you've got to do it still there's a way you got to do it and so either way works and so I was doing it that way but I think I want to try stuffing them guys I think I really want to try that because I just you know I just I've always wanted to try it and so I think I'm gonna do that for this month since it is going to be a brand new month and so I won't have to use personal care because again that's coming from my personal money um, anything outside of that you know I don't see there foresee there being that because there should be enough in there for me to be able to spend what I need to spend um, I will be using uh, children uh, category grocery category eating out category again in our budget spreadsheet all of this is already predetermined um, I don't think I'll need miscellaneous I don't know and then entertainment so I think I'm gonna try to do that so if I do end up doing it I'll come back and I'll do a video and I'll show you guys how it all worked out and so that is a part of this planning process as well with my budget planning this will be the final part of that process if I do end up implementing it so it would be planning out my my monthly my weekly and then doing my cash envelopes oh guys oh my gosh that was a lot <laughs> so let me see let me just make sure I'm done um, letting you guys know my planning process I think I am done I know it's a lot um, but again it helps me to stay on track so you don't necessarily have to do everything that I just mentioned in this video but I think just implementing a couple of things can help um, and then in terms of my faith planning that is done um, prior to my meeting so I have um, a meeting on Tuesday and then I have a meeting on Sunday so I have a schedule here in terms of how that all breaks down and that is kind of just done you know day by day let me see where I wrote it in. Oh, let me just show you the actual schedule. So this is the weekly schedule. So uh, m Sunday, Monday, Tuesday through Saturday, it tells me what I'm supposed to do. And then I pull that from here and then I write it down here on the bottom. As you can see, I'm pretty familiar with it because this is my life. You know, my, my spirituality is very important to me. And so this is stuff I do daily, uh, weekly anyway. So I don't really necessarily have to write it in, but I like to write it in. And so I would pull it from here and then I would come here and write in all of my daily activities that I need to do for my spiritual goals. And so that is a part of my planning process. But again, that will be done during my 
uh, weekly plan with me. Um, so that's not like broken down separately. And then I would actually do that study day by day, depending on what is on the schedule. And so that is it. There's nothing in my personal tab that is planning related. Um, it's just like ideas and stuff like that. Same with business. And again, we're not doing wellness just yet. But if I did do wellness, I would do that probably, probably after budget planning. Okay, so just to break it down, I would come here for May, Sunday. This is, this is what I'm doing Sunday. Coming here for May, planning out my May monthly. Then I'm planning out my half sheet. Let me punch that in real quick. And then I'm planning out my weekly. Once I'm done planning out my weekly, I will come to my menu planning section. I would find out what we're eating or I would pull a recipe out of here, put the pages in here, plan for it, decorate it, and then do my grocery list, which goes on the back of the half page that I just showed you. I'm just recapping everything because I know I went over a lot in this video. Um, and then I'll write it on the back here, which is my grocery list. Then once I'm done with my menu planning, I will come here and I will do my budget planning. Now, if I'm doing wellness planning, that will come before budget planning. And then I'll come here and my monthly, I'll write in all of my bills that I have to do for that week. Then I'll come to my weekly, which will be printed on pages. And then I'll actually go ahead and decorate it how I want, put all of my bills in that I need to pay during the week. And then day by day, I will be writing in my spending. And then once I'm done with my budget planning, then I will do my cash envelopes if needed. And then what I'll do after I'm done with my classic size happy planner and all my menu planning and all that good stuff, I'll open this baby up and then I'll come in and I'll go to the monthly, which May has not been planned for yet. And then I'll come into my monthly for May. I'll plan out my May monthly, which will be exactly the same as my classic size happy planner. And then I'll come in and I'll plan my weekly, which will be the exact same as my weekly and my classic happy planner. So we are planning a lot guys, but again, it really is helpful to me. You don't have to plan like I plan because it might seem like it's a lot and it's overkill, but to me, it helps. And so whatever is going to help my family, I'm all for it. And so whatever is going to help us out to become the best people we can be and the best family we can be and the most unified family we can be, that is what I'm doing. I'm all about that. Family is very important to me. So again, guys, this is my planning process. I wanted to come on and do a planner 101 video. I'm so overdue for that because there's a lot that goes into planning. You know, it really seems like, um, you know, when you see our spreads, it's like, oh, she's just so talented and she just knows how to do certain things. And I wish I could do that. But it's a lot that goes into planning. I mean, it's not just like sit down for an hour and plan. It's like sometimes it takes hours, hours. And so, you know, I try to keep things in in perspective and try not to go overboard because I, of course, family comes first and I want to make sure I'm actually doing the things in my planner. I don't want to be planning it out and then not doing it. And so I try to be realistic in my plans and I try to make it decorative because for me, making things look pretty is going to make me want to do it. So of course that's all factored in a part of the process. And so, um, again, it just works out for me and my family. I'm not saying that you have to implement everything that I do, but I do think if you take a small piece of it, then it, it could work for you and it can make your life a lot more manageable manageable and just more organized. Um, and then since I don't work outside the house, I do have a little bit more time, but I do also think if you do work outside the house, having a separate planner for work could also work out very well for you. When I was working full time, I haven't always been a stay at mom per um, entrepreneur. I was a project manager for a software company um, back in the day, um, maybe about six years ago. That's how long I've been an entrepreneur, which I actually love this life. I love being at home with my kids. I love having that flexibility. Um, but if I was still in that field, I would absolutely have a planner as well. So planners work for budgeting, home, um, recipe planning, a lot of different types of things. And that's why Happy Planner is so brilliant in all of the products that they've come out with because they really cover your whole life. So if you don't want to do weekly planning, you can just only do budget planning. If you don't want to do budget planning, you can just do weekly planning. If you don't want to do weekly or budget, you can just do menu planning. I mean, there's so many aspects of planning that you can do to help you. And so hopefully this video has been encouraging to you. Hopefully this video has helped you in some small way um, to 
figure out how exactly you want to do your planning and if you want to start planning and if you're a planner newbie hopefully this video really helps you I tried to be as in-depth and as thorough as possible in terms of breaking everything down so I'm just really hoping that uh, you got a lot of value from this video so if you did hopefully you will give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you have any questions whatsoever guys make sure to leave them in the comments below you know I'm there for you I'm always willing to help in any way that I can and um, so if you got any questions shoot them to me and I'll get back with you as soon as possible so thanks guys again for watching I really appreciate all of your love and support on my channel I'm so happy that we made it to 10,000 well and I say we because it's all of us You're, we're a family I don't have a family catchy name like some other people on YouTube do but I don't think it's always necessary and maybe sometime in the future I may develop one but for right now we're all planner babes just trying to keep our life in order so I just appreciate all the love and support on my channel I sometimes get emotional about it because I remember starting out I never thought I would be at 500 subscribers and to be at 10,000 over 10,000 it's just amazing it's mind-blowing so obviously you guys find value in my content and so hopefully you will continue to find value in it and so I just really appreciate you guys for watching today and I will see you guys next time